What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews on games I've completed that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsor bullcrap. Remember back in the glory days of Mascot Mania, where every single mascot had to be named in some way so that you could identify what they did because they were just so damned many of them. Bonk from Bonk's Adventure, Sonic the Hedgehog, and today's marsupial mascot, Crash Bandicoot, known for a plethora of titles across decades. Today's gambit to return him from the grave like Altered Beast sees him in a remake of sorts from Vicarious Visions, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. It's on sale on the 30th for the PS4 and PS4 Pro for $39.99. Let's sit back and see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy. Yo dog, I heard you like laser guns, a hero who skips every leg day, and the horrifying truth of animal Daisy Dukes. Graphics are up first. Understanding that this is a remake with no original code being touched, the attention to detail in many places is absolutely noticeable. Soft fur filters that abound for the various animal friends that come to collectively stop Cortex are instantly noticeable, and the levels themselves have a nice polish that's impossible to deny, especially when you compare it to the prior titles. Now, making the move to today's technologies can often prove tricky to developers, but in many ways, Vicarious Visions nailed it with the same color-saturated world of Crash, but brought forward forcefully into the world of high-quality anti-aliasing improved resolutions, original texture works, reworked physics engines, and of course, the aforementioned fur shaders. And of course, with all this, you'd think that Crash would be speeding down the road ignoring his namesake, just blazing straight towards the camera, piggybacking the gamer into a delightful trip down nostalgia lane, reminding you of the heady days of having to flip your PlayStation upside down to get it to read discs. But man, does Crash actually hit a lot of speed bumps along the way. First, the frame rate. Now, it's capped at 30 FPS and almost always hits that, which normally wouldn't be such a bad thing, but the game also has those reworked animations and physics and overall just sets expectations upon the player that really would have felt more in place in a less fast-paced game. It's like being invited to a boxing match and then finding out you're going to fight in a friggin' straitjacket. Oh, and the other guy has four arms, like Goro. It's not terrible, but you will actually notice it. Now, noticeable too are some odd decisions. For example, the aforementioned fur shaders. They look nice when gaming. But at any time, the game gets close up, and it does a lot of times for cutscenes. You can see that it's a transparency mask of some kind that sort of adds fur, which results in many scenes where it looks like Crash is wearing two friggin' fur coats. It is odd, and honestly, it's a little bit amateurish looking. Now, one nice thing is that on the PS4 Pro, the game tops out at 1440p resolution, and that increased resolution really does help it to attain a crisper, more defined look, but I can honestly say the choice between 1080p and maybe a 60 frame per second option would have been really appreciated. Here's the thing, straight up, there's no denying that for many Crash fans, this holds a special place in their heart, and the move to this generation had some incredible results, and you see them on screen a lot of the times, but it also creates some of its own new problems. Overall, though, I'd say pretty good. Sound, music, and voice. Cortex, we haven't determined the cause of past failures. <laughs> Moron! This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex commandos to world domination! And as you guys know, when it comes to audio categories, sound is always going to be up first. Now, like much of the game's other facets, audio was reworked for this remaster, and overall I have to say it's pretty good, with a heavy foot still in the past when real samples of various sounds just weren't really available, resulting in an excellent matching of the cartoony look on the screen to the overall sound design. It is not great, but it's good and it lends that high fructose feel to the game that I think sort of matches Crash Bandicoot. Overall, I'd say, pretty good sound. Music. Yeah, we all have it. Every one of us has that friend who sings out of tune but doesn't know it and belts out Adele songs like they were next in line for American Idol, and that's pretty much what listening to the music in this game is like. Now, music usually follows along with the action on screen or alerts the gamer to themes both hidden and pronounced within the elements of the gameplay, especially as they're being experienced, and that is even if, say, the design is to have elevator-style ambient tracks. The problem here that pops up all the time is it doesn't really work. The music's almost collectively without connection to the title, like someone read that bongo drums must be played in island settings, but never really checked to see if they were playing a romantic song or backing up the return of friggin' House of Pain. That being said, I was never a fan originally of the music in these titles, so really nothing has changed here, but overall, it just never seemed to fit for me. 
your mileage is going to vary. Voice. So this is actually better. The original game always had odd voiceover work to me, and I was never sure exactly why. It could have been the recording technology at the time. I'm not actually sure. But here we have a cleaner sample overall, and while not thematically or certainly not emotionally better, it is still easier to listen to them when it doesn't sound like someone's friggin' crunching into a giant stock of celery behind everybody as they're recording lines. So yeah, it's not Shakespeare, but it's also not Shakespeare down at the local vegetarian buffet. And that, of course, brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, Insane Trilogy follows the main three titles of the Crash Bandicoot series from the original game to Warped. For those people who are new to the game, you're Crash, which is a Bandicoot, which is really just an ugly-ass, hand-sized rat-kangaroo combo. So, of course, because it was based in the 90s, he's jacked up like he spends all his time at GNC buying all the product the FDA is getting ready to take off the shelves and just doing burpees for YouTube videos. A new addition here is the ability, for the most part, to always play as Crash or your sister. You leap, run, slide, spin, twist, smash, and body slam your way through an assortment of levels. Now, if you're not Big John Studd in a set of stack boxes just waiting for the juicy life-giving fruit inside, you're sprinting across ice flows or timing the capital punishment-like end of Armored Knights sadly stricken with strokes, or you're outwitting camouflaged enemies that are trying to sneak up on you in the swamps. The original games were really sprawling, even as each single title. But when you put three into one collective title, that is actually pretty damned epic. Luckily, the developer didn't just port this up from older versions either. That's like buying a Monet and then splashing it with some Warhammer 40,000 oil-based paints and trying to sell it for three times as much. Instead, they basically took the level geometry, structure, story, and design from the original games, but then reworked them in the remaster, allowing for a larger number of changes that you normally don't get in these kind of games. Not only to better the gameplay, like reworking the physics in Crash 1, but also allowing for players to, as I said before, play Crash's sister Coco throughout all three titles as well. Now, the game basically drops you into a title screen that allows for you to pick one of the three titles to jump into and you're off. You do not have to beat one to go to two or anything like that. Each game has a variety of changes beyond the graphics like reworked physics, being able to save, fixes to some of the issues that cause players confusion in the originals and more. Now, if you're a fan of Crash, at times you are going to be in heaven here, with you sprinting down island trails some asshole thought it'd be funny to dig big ditches in, to finding all the secret crystals and fighting off an assortment of boss creatures all working for the main bad guy. The problem is, if you're not prepared or you're new to this trilogy, the game can feel really old, so you have to expect that. First, the loading times. They're actually quite long for a title like this, and puzzling as well, especially when many times you're just loading back into a very small menu section. Additionally, the new physics just don't always work in these games. Now, come on, you just can't yank Tom Hanks out of Apollo 13, replace him with Mickey Rourke, and expect the same goddamn movie. But that's how the physics feel in Crash. They do work, but they feel incredibly odd at times, and not as connected to the levels in certain places as they did in the original, and it's certainly noticeable. Now, this is something that does happen in remakes. Character interactions can modify levels, so if you change physics, you do have to look at your level structure. And while it may have modified the design a bit here, the number of oddly delayed jumps and weird collision boxes is a nuisance, even after many, many hours with the title. Is it a major nuisance? No, absolutely not. But it is noticeable, and for people new to this series, they may actually notice it even more than others. Despite any issues, one thing this game does not have a problem with is the overall size in which it offers you. You get three games, all of them impressively created for today's generation. Additionally, they have changes to them, like the ability to play that secondary character in all of the titles as well, something that was not available originally. Fun factor. Hey, you know what? It's Crash. This is either going to be your thing or it isn't. If you're cool with what many would consider to be prehistoric gameplay design, and for the most part, 2 or 2.5D gameplay, then you're going to be fine here, collecting fruits, smashing boxes, and fighting off enemies. And there's something to be said for that. As a person who's a major fan of these kinds of titles, the Crashes, the Pandemoniums, and all of those, I am all for seeing titles like this seeing a full remake. Not a retouched, barely produced cash grab, but something like this, cored out and rebuilt. Sadly, that doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect. The jumping issues did detract from my enjoyment. And just like the original games, Bandicoot just isn't a very slick character to begin with in the first place. But overall, there's a massive amount of content here, and I enjoyed a great deal of it. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Because of its cost and because of how much you get here, this is a buy, but I'm going to be honest, it just barely. If you don't like these kind of games, then this is a wait for a sale for you most likely. And in fact, it really doesn't seem geared to try to change minds at all. It could certainly bring in newcomers if you're okay with this kind of gameplay. But if you're not or if you're looking for something new, this is probably not the title for you. 
On the other hand, if you're a fan of these titles originally, or if you're a fan of this kind of gameplay, Insane Edition is filled with content, especially for that reduced price and with the full three titles and that ability to play as the extra characters. It is not perfect, but I don't know of a game that is, and it single-handedly shows the benefits and dangers of a total remaster and perfect clarity. And the fact that it does so at a reduced price with a ton of content is certainly noticeable. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon or my Amazon affiliate links. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.